Hi, and welcome to training on how to use an unstable slope management program to evaluate unstable soil and rock slopes. This unstable slope management program, or USMP, has been developed for federal land management agencies as part of a transportation asset management program focusing on geotechnical assets. Unstable slopes are natural and built earthen slopes that cannot stand in their current configuration. When these slopes are adjacent to roadways and then fail, Soil or rock material falls onto the road, or when the earth below is unstable, the road cracks and drops. Both scenarios create hazardous conditions and increase agency costs to maintain slopes and provide mobility. In this study, the unstable slopes of interest are those that affect the roadway and include landslides, rock falls, unstable soil embankments, and debris flows. These events block traffic, increase maintenance and safety risk, and siphon funds from operational budgets. Delaying response often allows the problem to become worse, increase risk, increase the frequency of damage, cause inconvenient road closures, and increase costs to the agency through higher maintenance and mitigation costs. Most transportation agencies have generally reacted to geotechnical problems as they arose, whether the issue was a landslide, a failed embankment, or road closures due to rockfall events. Recently, however, there has been a move towards applying asset management principles and processes to geotechnical assets. There is a greater appreciation for the roles that these dirt assets play in transportation systems and geotechnical asset management, or GAM, is increasingly recognized as an integral part of transportation asset management. The USMP gives your agency the tools needed to locate, inventory, assess, and prioritize unstable slope assets to meet performance goals, shifting from a reactionary, high-cost method of managing slope assets to one where systematic improvements are made in a preventative and proactive manner. This is the primary driver for the federal guidelines requiring asset management for select asset types. As geotechnical assets deteriorate during their life cycle, most transportation agencies resort to a short-term, worst-first approach in determining when or whether to ignore, repair, rehabilitate, or replace the asset. For example, rockfall inventory programs in many states rank rockfall sites so that the most dangerous slopes receive first attention. However, expanding limited funds on worse first short-term problem fixes can result in steadily declining conditions for transportation systems. The USMP includes rating criteria for rock slopes and unstable soil slopes focused on roads and trails managed by the FOMAs. It also includes database tools for rating data storage, performance measures for slopes, and benefit cost calculations for planning and decision support. This video focuses on rating rock and soil slopes. By now you should have a copy of the rating form in front of you. Once filled out, this two-sided form will contain all the data needed for locating and evaluating each unstable slope. The form includes a portion for critical location information and site measurements, and preliminary rating criteria with categories specific to either rock slopes or landslides. The second page contains spaces for rating categories relative to the slope's hazards, the risk it poses, and the site's total score. Category descriptions and evaluation guidelines for each criteria are contained in supporting documentation. Now let's get started. Planning for the field assessment starts with a call to maintenance personnel. Discuss roads to focus on with both your geotechnical supervisor and those maintenance personnel responsible for its upkeep. They will let you know the maintenance hotspots, relative rockfall and landslide activity levels, and where accidents may have occurred in the past. Review a topographic map of the area and discuss the unstable slope locations and, if possible, visit the sites to discuss site-specific issues prior to finalizing site ratings. To start, we'll go through a checklist of items to get ready for field assessments. First and foremost, the most important aspects are your safety equipment. This includes a reflective vest and hard hats, and also a traffic cone to place around the vehicle. After those are placed out and you have all your safety gear on, you can uh, grab your other field gear, including a, a tape measure to measure uh, various rock slopes and uh, offsets, a laser range finder for larger distances, a calculator, a uh, camera, preferably with the GPS monitoring system on there so you can uh, geotag your photos and know where they're at, a field notebook, a field form, the field manual to describe each one of the categories, and your d selected device for entering field data. 
So the first thing you'll want to do when you drive up to a site is determine if it's a rock fall or if it's a landslide issue. The primary way you do that is you take a look at the site and you determine uh, what's the major problem. Is it uh, an accumulation of soil coming down or is it an uh, accumulation of rocks or individual rocks coming down? At this site you can see that there's a mix of soil and rock material, but the likely main problem here would be rocks coming down on the road. This site would be a rock fall site. This site is a landslide site. You can see the cracks in the road, the embankment dropping down, and this is pretty clearly a landslide site with another rock fall site right behind me. When there's a question and you're not sure, feel free to rate both of the criteria and see which one has a higher hazard rating. The field form is separated into four distinct categories, the site information, the preliminary rating, the slope hazard rating, and the risk rating. The first part of the form is what we're going to talk about first. That's where you fill in the site information uh, pertaining to your relevant site. Uh, one of the most important things to remember on here is to make sure that you're filling in the, your management area in a manner consistent with your agency's uh, protocol. For instance, here at the Gifford Pinchot National Forest, the Forest Service may opt to abbreviate that to GPNF. Uh, National Park Service may use their four-letter acronyms for their, for their uh, national park sites, like YELL, Y-E-L-L -L for Yellowstone. Discuss your, with your uh, managers which uh, acronyms you should be using on your forms. So this is the beginning of the site information form. Here we discuss the management area using the correct four letter or the acronym that your agency decides on, the date of the rating, the road and trail number. The, these may vary in your agency. Check with your management uh, personnel if, uh, for a map of what uh, trail numbers or road numbers you'll be using. And also a checkbox if it's a trail or a road that you're evaluating. It's classification. Here in the Forest Service, they use uh, maintenance levels for their road classification. Your agencies may differ the personnel evaluating the slope, the beginning mile marker and ending mile marker if your road system has it. Uh, many roads uh, do, do have that, but some do not. Check with management. The side of the road. Uh, typically, this uh, counts up either left or right as you go up mile point. For instance, the slopes here, they're uh, on the left of the road because the mile point markers are going up as we travel uh, that direction. The weather, here it's a nice sunny day here in uh, southwest Washington. The hazard type, rock fall, then also some of the information that uh, pertains to the rock fall. If it's a planar wedge or topple failure or multiple failures through the site, you can circle more than one through here. Same thing with landslide, if it's above, below, or across the route, if it's translational slide, rotational debris flow, etc. You can leave those blank if you're unsure. The beginning coordinate, that would be the beginning of the site in the latitude and longitude and also the ending coordinates in the lat latitude and longitude. And the datum you're recording in, the default datum for this program is WGS84. So average annual daily traffic, that's the number of uh, vehicles traveling on the road on average over the entire year. The remainder of these uh, categories factor into the ratings below, so I'll describe those in a more detail. So the first category to evaluate in the site information is the length of the affected road or slide. This is uh, done by starting at the beginning of the slope section and then uh, ideally using a roller tape to walk the length of the feature. Deciding when to end a slope is an important uh, judgment call. Here I decided to end a slope where the rock had changed from a, a exposed rock cut to a soil slope and to where it uh, narrows down to almost no cut at all. Overall, this slope was 634 feet long. The next field to evaluate on the site information portion of the form is the slope height of the rock slope or the axial length of the slide. The best way to do this is with the laser rangefinder. After I set it to the, the vertical distance on the laser rangefinder, I can shoot the tallest part of the slope. 
Here, after adding my eye height, I get an uh, overall height of 86 feet vertical. Axial length on a slide is a little bit more difficult to interpret. Here's some judgments uh, needed because I don't know exactly where this is towing out at the base of the slope. Here I'm using a judgment call of about uh, halfway down to where the slope steepness breaks off to be a little bit more gentle. Down about that bush. Looking down here, the axial distance is about 45 feet. The next field to evaluate is the slope angle. For rock slopes, some of the newer range finders will give you a, a slope angle when you shoot the top and the bottom of the slope. If you don't have one of those, you can use a clinometer, either directly or indirectly estimating. If it's safe to do so, you can get underneath the slope and shoot up to try and approximate either the slope adjacent to you using the clinometer or shooting up the slope in this direction but only do so if it's safe to safe place to be. For landslides, I'll get the slope angle down the axial length of the slope by walking up and approximating about when I'm right on the plane of the slope. Here the slope angle is about 39 degrees. Sight distance is the next category on the form. It's the distance that a traveler has to see a hazard on the road and then react to the seen hazard. Once you see the hazard, you can start walking and measuring that distance. That distance that you're measuring is the decision site distance for the slope. 217 feet. The next field on the form is the roadway width or trail width if we're on a trail. Here the purpose is to determine the, the width of the road available to avoid a roadside hazard. A narrow road will uh, be more hazardous while a wider road will be less so. If there's a paved shoulder for a portion of the slope, you use the minimum distance of the roadway and uh, ignore the paved turnout or shoulder. Here I stop at the edge of pavement, 26 feet. The next category is speed limit. That factors into the Ashto decision site distance that is required for a site and also the average vehicle risk. Record the speed limit for your site as you drive up to it. For the block size or volume category, you look at the rocks in the, in the ditch and uh, measure the maximum dimension of the block sizes present. If there are no rocks in the ditch, use your judgment on what's a reasonable large rock size from the, from the slope. Here this is five feet and it looks like it's even bigger here across the top. The category maxes out at about four and a half feet. If it's a volume estimate you can uh, look at the different size of the rocks and the quantity of rocks in the slope. Here they both would max out because the rocks are large and also a large volume of rocks came down at once. I marked down both. The next field is annual rainfall. Here take a look at the available rainfall data for your region and be sure that you are taking into account the uh, effects of the mountainous terrain on your rainfall. At the bottom of the slope it could often be much lower than it is higher up in the mountains. So after completing the site information portion of the form, filling in other items not th uh, completely discussed such as ditch width, ditch depth, slope, and any comments you have on the site including uh, if it's a sole access route, if there are mitigation measures present, and the number of photos and the range of the photos that you took while you're on the site, any comments you may have. The next portion of the form is the preliminary rating. Note that these are subdivided into four different categories with a three to the power of X type of scoring sum, a three to the power of one of three, three to the power of two of nine, 27, 81, and so forth with the knowledge that these have maximum scores of 100 points each. Note that some of them are for landslides only, some for rockfall only, and some for all slopes. After you uh, evaluate all of these, look at the preliminary rating. And if the sum of them are between 15 and 21, it's a good slope. In uh, 22 to 161 points fair and poor are slopes that to have a score of over 161 points. 
check with your management uh, personnel, but uh, at this point, sites that are rated fair or poor receive detailed evaluation either now or later, depending on what your agency decides. The first category in the preliminary rating is for category A, landslide roadway width affected. This is where we evaluate the, the width of the road that's being impacted or affected by the, the landslide. Here you can see that uh, we're within the first category, the zero to five percent of the road width being affected. But further up the road, we get it a full 25% of the road. And that maximum distance is uh, what is being rated in, the, in this category. Other slopes may be up to, easily be up to 100% of the roadway width being affected by the slide. The next category is category B, landslide, slider erosion effects. This is intended to uh, uh, measure the effects of the uh, landslide on the roadway, either through a, a dropping down of the roadway like we have here or deposition on top if you have a slide above the roadway. We talk about uh, anything from a visible crack like uh, over here or something that's uh, more offset right here. We measure the worst part of it on the slope. Here we measure the maximum uh, displacement on the slope on this slide as approximately four inches, which is 81 points. The next category is category C, road length affected by the landslide. We start off with uh, where it's beginning to affect the pavement all the way to the end. This is one of the calculated scores and so you take the measurement, enter it directly and the score will calculate out. One hundred and thirty feet. Category D, rockfall ditch effect, and this is the first rockfall category. This is separated into good, moderate, limited, and no catchment, and usually is a result of the judgment of the of the rater. A good ditch will catch nearly all the rockfall coming down on the site, typically in the ninety percent. Um, a moderate uh, ditch effectiveness is reduced from that, while limited. More of the rocks will reach the roadway, while a no catchment category, almost all the rocks will reach the roadway. One of the items to consider is the presence of launch features on the slope. Here, a fresher rocks, rock ledge is a present on the slope that would kick rocks out from falling above and reaching the roadway, reducing the effectiveness of the ditch. Other aspects to consider are the presence of uh, debris fans where soil debris has uh, filled the ditch and reducing its effectiveness. The minimum ditch effectiveness for a site is what you'd evaluate for this category. Here, I would rate it as moderate. You can also note how many rocks have uh, stayed in the, in the ditch in this location with only a few scars in the road here, showing that the ditch is typically good enough for the rock fall that is occurring. The next category is category E, the rock fall history. Ideally, you'd want to talk with maintenance on what the rockfall history of this site is. If they are unavailable or otherwise uh, occupied, you can also take a look at the uh, appearance of the slope ditch. You can see here that there's not been a lot of a ditch cleaning that's been done. The weeds are, uh, are high, indicating that there's not been a, a, a frequent clean out and also a lack of uh, equipment marks in the ditch indicates that the, the rockfall here isn't too active. Here, judging based on the uh, in the absence of maintenance information, judging on the quantity of material in the ditch still, probably accumulated over a number of years, I would estimate this to be occasional rockfall. Nine points. The next category is category F, the rockfall block size or volume per event. As we mentioned earlier, we are, had a one, two, three, or four foot size for the, the categories, the three, nine, 27, or 81 categories or a volumetric event. Here we had uh, estimated seven feet or 30 cubic yards, which both max out the score at 100 points. Category G is the first preliminary rating category that applies to both landslides and rock falls. This is intended to measure or approximate the impact on traffic should a probable uh, event occur at the site. It should take into account the, the history of the site, the availability of a detour, and also uh, maintenance inputs. 
At this site here, I would estimate that uh, from based on the rock falls in the past, that uh, it would be a, rated as a partial use remains, use modification required, and a short 30 minute detour may be available. Okay. Category H on the preliminary rating also applies to both landslide and rock fall sites. This category is designed to capture routes or trail importance and can be assessed using either quantitative or qualitative data. The ADT of a roadway gives a rough uh, quantitative indicator of its impact on the road, regional e economy and mobility of people, goods, and services. So when that's available, use that. For those roads where, or trails where a, uh, traffic volumes are, are not available, a qualitative uh, scoring uh, relating to its usage and relative economic and recreational importance can be applied. For sites where both qualitative and quantitative data is available, both categories should be evalu evaluated with the highest resulting score given to the site. For example, a roadway that is the only route to a popular trail may be of moderate recreational importance, or 27 points, but the ADT may be only be 200, or 9 points. For this site, the higher score of 27 would be used. After completing the preliminary rating for your landslide or rockfall site, take a look at the bottom of the preliminary rating table. For a landslide site, you'd only add up categories A, B, C, G, and H, A, B, C, G, and H, or D, E, F, G, and H for rockfalls. Looking at our two sites over here, we had either uh, 120 points for the landslide that we we're evaluating or 136 points for the rockfall we're evaluating. Both fair sites. Since these are both fair, then uh, if management requires it, then we turn over the sheet and begin our detailed rating.